Welcome to this talk on vocal emotion recognition in children with cochlear implants and with hearing aids. When we listen to someone talk, we don't only hear the words they are saying, but from the sound of their voice, we can derive a lot of information about the speaker. For example, we can judge whether they are a man or a woman or an old or young person. Uh, and we can also make judgment about the speaker's emotional state. And correctly interpreting uh, the emotions of another person is important in our daily communication. And this ability contributes to children's social development. Previous research has shown developmental effects for vocal emotion recognition in children with normal hearing. On the left, you can see results from five to 10 year old English speaking children um, who listen to three digit numbers conveying one of 10 emotions. These included basic emotions such as anger, fear, or sadness, but also more complex emotions such as relief or surprise. On the right are the results from a study by Nagels et al. Um, in Dutch and English children between four and 12 years old. <clears throat> uh, this study focused on three emotions, happiness, anger, and sadness. And again, you can see a clear development with age and also a difference in performance uh, still between the 10 to 12 year old children and the adults, uh, suggesting that this development continues throughout the teenage years. The study by uh, Nagels et al. also included a small sample of children with cochlear implants, and their scores are overall a bit lower compared to age-matched children with normal hearing. And this was also um, still the case when <clears throat> considering their hearing age, so taking the age of implantation into account. CI users suffer from electric hearing, and they are therefore uh, therefore less able to perceive voice cues needed to recognize emotions. Um, but emotion perception in children with hearing aids um, is a relatively understudied topic. Um, one may say that children with hearing aids wouldn't have difficulties perceiving vocal emotions because the hearing aid corrects for their hearing loss by amplifying the sounds. But it is not as simple as that. Uh, because for these children, the perception of voice cues expressing emotions is affected by their hearing aid combined with the degree of hearing loss. While hearing aids uh, amplify incoming sounds, which leads to improved audibility, <clears throat> these sounds are still delivered to a damaged hearing system. Especially for losses above 45 dB, there may be supra-threshold effects that affect the perception of relevant acoustic cues. Listeners with higher degrees of hearing loss typically show reduced frequency selectivity due to broader auditory filters. Hearing aids cannot do much there. But this may affect the perception of pitch variations that are important in emotional prosody. Furthermore, for listeners with hearing loss, the range of sound levels for which sounds are both audible and comfortable is reduced. Dynamic range compression of hearing aids may then also affect the amplitude envelope of speech and loudness cues become less available to hearing aid users. <clears throat> In this talk, I will present findings from a collaboration between Erasmus Medical Center and University Medical Center Groningen. Um, and in this, in this study, we were interested in the psychosocial development of children with hearing loss. Um, we included children with um, cochlear implants and with hearing aids who had been using their devices for at least one year. And this study focused on um, some key aspects of auditory functioning, such as speech perception and perception and production of vocal emotions but also behavioral and communication problems by uh, means of questionnaires. Um, <clears throat> for the ICOPE study, we uh, included 41 children with hearing aids, 34 children with cochlear implants, and 43 children with normal hearing. And in this talk, I will only focus on the vocal emotion recognition data measured through uh, with, with the EMOHI test. Uh, and for this analysis, we also included data from the study by Nagels et al, which included 58 children with normal hearing, 
and 15 adults with normal hearing. <clears throat> During the Imohi test, participants hear pseudo-speech sentences recorded by two male and two female talkers. They are produced with three emotional intonations, happiness, sadness, and anger, and the test consists of 36 trials. We performed a quantile regression analysis to estimate the probability distribution of the accuracy scores of children and adults with normal hearing across the full age range. Uh, here we see a continuing development throughout childhood and also quite some variation in scores across all ages. We then overlaid this with the individual data from hearing-aided children, shown by the orange triangles, and the cochlear implanted children, shown by the purple diamonds. Again, we see a lot of variability in these groups, with some hearing-aided or CI children showing overlapping scores with normal hearing children, and some even scoring above the median of the normal hearing distribution. In a second analysis, we used logistic generalized additive models to look at aging effects per group and to compare the different groups. We found that for each of the three groups, there was a significant effect of age. And when comparing the groups, we saw that normal hearing children had higher scores compared to the hearing aided and the CI children. The two groups using hearing devices, the hearing aided and the CI children, um, did not show any significant differences at the group level, given that these children perceive very different signals. This finding is somewhat surprising and could be due to the rehabilitative support that children with cochlear implants typically receive. To follow up on this research, longitudinal studies would be of great value to follow the development of the same children and to study whether uh, hearing aided or CI children will catch up with normal hearing children at older ages. Especially for children with lower scores, it will be important to assess whether these difficulties in emotion perception are limited to the auditory modality or whether they also extend to other domains such as visual emotion perception or challenges in their psychosocial development. Uh, it would also be interesting to consider the linguistic input of very young children and how this may have cumulative effects later in childhood. Children learn social emotional skills uh, from interacting with others, especially in these early years, but this input is often less accessible for children with hearing loss. Their hearing loss may prevent them from overhearing conversations such that they miss out on social information that normal hearing children are able to hear. And in addition, uh, parents or teachers may use less complex sentences or vocabulary when speaking to children with hearing loss. Uh, and this may also impact social evo emotional development, including possibly vocal emotion recognition. <clears throat> Finally, for hearing aided children, it is likely that their devices provide a benefit for vocal emotion recognition, but so far this has not been tested directly in children. In conclusion, based on these results, a child-appropriate and validated vocal emotion diagnostic test could be a helpful addition to standard clinical practice to identify those hearing-aided or CI children <clears throat> with particular difficulties in vocal emotion recognition and to provide them with additional and specialized rehabilitation. Thank you for watching this talk. And if you have any questions or remarks, please feel free to reach out during the discussion session or by sending an email.